Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. We are going to start the process of removing a good, a good chunk of honey from some hives today. And uh, just want to give, show you a few things. We started a mite treatment on this. The Formic Pro treatment is coming to an end here now. Uh, but I want to show you a few things that uh, Formic Pro has done. Formic acid being pumped out of the hives. Actually, the gas of the formic acid has burnt, burnt a lot of the vegetation right in the front of the hive where they have been uh, blowing out those acid fumes. Then some more is growing back in its place, of course, but it always impresses me just to what extent that formic acid, how aggressive that formic acid is in terms of that it burns the vegetation up to 18 inches out in front of the colony. Quite impressive stuff. The uh, the bees obviously don't like it, but it uh, does a great job of reducing my infestation. We'll be removing some of the honey from some of these hives today and setting some up for the bees to leave the um, honey supers. If you recall, when we set up these hives, these are single brood chamber hives, where we have this box here is almost full of brood, eight to seven or eight frames of brood, maybe even 10. Queen excluder, this was the first brood chamber originally in the spring, which is now almost full of honey some of the areas where the brood emerged and they didn't backfill everything because the dearth came. And then one or two of the, these supers are, were filling and stopped filling once the dearth really slowed everything down. Now the bees are moderately busy today, so that it's, we're not, probably not in a total dearth. I doubt the bees are actually losing weight. They're probably gaining weight very, very slowly, but we'll have a, a look in and see where we are and then the colonies that are the supers that are the most full will start the process of taking them off and replacing them with these supers over here to uh, give them somewhere to put the honey in during the uh, coming nectar flow we're hoping that in a couple of weeks within the next week to ten days we're going to be getting a goldenrod honey flow and so hopefully these hives these boxes here will be filled up uh, by early to mid-September. So let's have a look. Now I'm not expecting a great deal in the top box, but unless things have changed in the last couple of weeks. And while there's bees up here, I don't see any real signs that they're doing anything with it. They're occupying the space and there may be a little bit of honey in some of the drawing combs, but they're certainly not drawing out the foundation that we have in here. About three or four frames of foundation which has not been touched. And comb here which has Oh, perhaps a pound of honey in there. So this will give them lots of space. I'll be able to leave them lots of space with the empty space here. These one of the supers I will not take off. This super is a lot more full. A lot of the comb that was put in as foundation here was actually built. So we're just going back in time. This was put on well before the uh, honey flow came to an end. They built comb and they filled it two thirds of the way with honey, maybe one third of the way. None of it's capped. What I should have done is bring my refractometer here to see just how, how, um, how cured this honey is. But a good field test to see whether this honey is ready to take off or not would be you shake the comb. 
and giving it a good shake, nothing is coming out. And that is usually a very good indicator that the honey flow, that the honey is cured, even though it's not capped. So whilst you can have honey open like this, and usually that means don't harvest it yet, it could be that it is ready to harvest and you can take it off and spin it out without any problem. I don't have my refractometer here, so I can't tell for sure. But a field test like that would say it's probably okay. Next time I come here, I'll bring my refractometer and test some of these supers. But for now, I will probably leave this one in place alongside the other one. For a shallow super, it's got about 15 to 20 pounds in here. So that is about two thirds full. So it's not far off. These combs, however, I can see there's lots of cappings in here. So this super was filled before we, um, mostly full of honey before we even put the next supers on. But now they're being capped right out to the ninth, the ninth frame on the outside here. So, let's have a look. So we will be harvesting this super and the super below it. So what we'll do with this, Jordan, is we will set up the fume board on some of these hives and drive some bees out. That's lovely. It's about 80 or 90% capped, as are the other frames here. So we'll be driving the bees out of this box and out of the one below it as well. But just to uh, make life easier, Rather than disrupting the brood, if we use the fume board here and drive the bees out of this box and this box, that means the fumes will be driving bees out of the brood chamber as well. And I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is reposition the honey boxes in order to have the minimum impact on the brood chamber. Oh, that is full. And this super should be mostly full. What there will be is space in here where there was brood, which will have emerged. And the question is to what extent they managed to backfill it. So they are backfilling to some extent. This honey was, is all capped here. This was full of honey, and this is where brood has emerged. But if you look, they are gradually backfilling that space. So there's a small honey flow on. If they weren't backfilling, every cell would be dry right up to the edge of the capped honey. But they're gradually doing that, and they're trying to leave space here. They're leaving the space here as the last part that they will refill because they're thinking the queen would come up here and lay, but because there's a queen excluder there, the queen can't come up there to lay. So they're leaving room for the queen, who's pretty crowded down, downstairs, relatively speaking, but she's not gonna be able to come up here. So they will gradually backfill this with honey. Before they do, we're taking it off. make sure you leave the formic acid pads in there. It doesn't hurt to leave them there for a little bit longer. Put the supers back on.
And Jordan, let's put one of the honey supers on. Keep another one as well. Deeper shallow. Uh, another deeper, uh, shallower one. So we're going to give them a little bit of extra space here. And now we'll drive the bees back down into this space. There's the uh, white tub in the truck. I'll need as well. So what we're going to do for an example in this hive is use the fume board. And the fume board is great in warm temperatures. High 70s, 80s, it's terrific. At lower temperatures, it's less good. But what we're going to do now is put some of the, this stuff is called Bego on the fume board. It's a felt board, so it's an absorbent surface, darker cover. Put a bit of this on there. Should be a squirter thing on here, but I don't have one on it for some reason. <coughs> That is plenty. I don't know, do, can you see the top of this? Can we see up here through that lens? Oh, we, I just wanted to know if we need, if you could see it before you move the camera. Uh, the current point, no, you couldn't. Sorry? You couldn't before. You couldn't, okay. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> we can now? Yeah. Okay, so we're using the Bego. And we'll put a bit in the, a few dribbles in here. I did a little bit before, but the camera wasn't pointing at it. So there's a little bit of bee go in there. And that's absorbed by the felt material. And now, when I turn this over, those fumes are starting to drop into the colony. This will drive the bees down. And what we're looking to do is get them out of this box and out of that box. And in the meantime, while we're doing this, we'll check out another hive. supers. There's been very little action because they were put on just the end of the honey flow. So we're not expecting a great deal out of them. If you're not, not getting. The question is, how are things going below them? Plenty of capped honey here. So these two supers can also come off. So we've got another fume board. Let's set up the other fume board as well. Oh. And this super is pretty full of honey. Acid treatments have gone very well. We're done with these. Take it off. Okay, let's put an empty deep super on here. Give things somewhere to go. Put the 
shallower soup, the other shallower soup. So the bees have somewhere to move to. Okay, and here's a fume board I made myself with one of these deep rimmed inner covers which I don't tend to use much, it's often used for winter feeding, so I just stapled in a piece of cloth and it will work exactly the same. up the entrance there. So the bees are now moving down in both of these hives and I can carry on and what I'm going to do is set up to remove honey in a different way with the other colonies. So over here what we're going to do is we'll set up an escape board instead. I'm not going to remove all the honey today, I'm going to do it gradually over the space of a week, maybe 10 days or so. Now removing the bees with an escape board works great as long as you don't have brood in the, brood, in the uh, honey supers. If you've got brood in the honey supers, it's not going to work because the bees will not leave combs unattended. Lots of capped honey in here, although these two frames never got built on, these seven have been and they're full of honey. So we'll be taking honey off this super, taking this one off and the one below it. And we're going to put it deep in its place. Now with this hive, it's also important that we do leave some honey behind because the bees can starve. I just want to double check in here that there is honey and I can see honey in the upper corners of the brood chamber here and in here so I want to make sure that there's going to be honey left behind because especially right now there's a bit of a dearth and I want to make sure that I'm not leaving this hive totally without honey that's also one reason why we're leaving this super on because there's a good five to ten pounds of honey in here already so this is staying here. It's very important when you're running single brood chamber hives that you don't leave them with no honey in the hive. So there's no honey in this box, it's was fresh, freshly on, but there is in the box below. And now we put the escape board on and the escape board, as we've said before, is like a one-way door. The bees come through this hole, they come out these corners, but for the life of them, they can't figure out how to get back up in the upper part of the hive. So we put this box on, the one-way door facing downwards. And we put our honey supers back on. But when you're using the skateboard, you also have to be sure that you're not leaving any cracks or crevices that robber bees can get into. We've got a lot of bees here. 
and we're just making sure that we've got a good seal and what I like as a good seal for here is to have a I'd like to the, the bubble the foam inner cover yep foam inner cover is very useful because it acts kind of like a gasket if I put this up here the bees are not going to find their way down through the top of the super what they could do if you use an inner cover that would be an unguarded entrance so now with this up here there's no way bees are going to get in this way or through these cracks and crevices because a crevice that's a good pitting supers so this area is now secure the only way in and out of these two boxes is through this escape board there's no brood in these boxes so the bees will travel through there's a tiny honey flow on at the moment so that keeps bees cycling through the hive and we've left some honey in the hive and some space uh, that the bees will hopefully fill up later So we'll repeat that with this hive. Actually, let's see how the bees are progressing with the uh, fume board here. A couple of bees in this super. some bees working their way down so we'll give them more time this super is largely vacated but not entirely so we're getting most of the bees out but it takes a little time so you can't come to plan to do the whole yard necessarily at once anyway let's get back to setting up a few more longer term one so now the plane is gone so basically what's going to take place here these bees will leave and go through the escape board but it's going to take roughly 48 hours they usually work on 24 hours per box to clear them of bees and so we'll be back here in a couple of days to remove some honey from the ones that we put escape boards on we've brought four escape boards mm -hmm. with us and we're going to put at least a couple of supers above each escape board, not too much more. Don't block the entrance for this necessarily. A good one to leave for after with an escape board. There's a good 10 pounds of honey in there, so we know they'll have plenty of food. This box is certainly ready to come off, as will be this one. So we'll put an escape board on these ones too. Put a deep on here to fill up in our absence.
Some colonies backfilled these brood chambers more than others, or may have had more brood in there to backfill. This one doesn't feel particularly heavy, but I can see a gap here. So we're gonna put some tape around this to ensure we don't have robbing taking place. So we're going to seal up any gaps. We had a bit of a gap here. So I didn't want this to be an alternative entrance for the bees. And so we've got it covered up with tape. Now there won't be any robbing there. We'll put that on. So this is bee proof. These have only one way to go, but down through the escape board. We've left plenty of room for them to expand into. And we've left them with honey because there's not much in that lower brood chamber. Okay, we'll take the honey off those two now, these are not. So the only problem with the fume board is it can be pretty slow. It's not hot weather, so it's not working at its fastest. Next to no honey on this. 
so it might be risky to leave that as their only honey supply. This one's not that full anyway. So we'll leave both of these behind. shallow. Actually, come to think of it, we probably don't even need one on this one. Let's just put an escape board on it. This population is a little less. I think this is one that had swarmed earlier in the season. It hasn't quite caught up yet. Probably put another So in this particular hive, it wasn't as strong as the others. I'm still taking 30 or 40 pounds of honey off on this box, but this this box didn't have much honey in at all. So I'm leaving this one in, which got about 20 pounds of honey in, just to make sure I don't leave this short of food resources. Now, the escape boards for 24 hours are going to work a lot better. Um, say 24 hours per super, uh, approximately. So I'm only right now I've only got one box from this hive to go over this escape board. So what I might do is transfer a box from another hive to make use of that escape board. So why don't we do that with this one here? The fact that the bees come from a different hive doesn't really matter. They're coming in through the honey super. And in fact, if a few bees stay behind, well that hive could have done with a boost anyway. Whereas the other hives could spare some of the bees. But the majority of older bees that do get moved with a honey super onto another hive, when they come out the entrance of the hive, they'll fly back to their original hive. So no problem. Some of the manipulations you can do when you know how the bees behave. Very little honey in here. because the other super felt nearly empty. So we're going to take this super of bees and honey. It's quite full. going on top of the other hive. Point the camera this way. So I've now moved it from that hive to this hive. We're going to have to put some tape on it to stop it to stop rubbing. But this is going to keep get the escape boards working right and put into full use. Escape board will get, take the bees out of both hives. Now I just need to take these up because I've got some gaps here.
this, which is pretty cool. Just making sure that we don't run low on food supply in this hive. So I'm putting some honey back on because this one is empty. The shallow on top of this one, I suppose. Yeah. Skateboards, all four skateboards are being used. So let's see how these fume boards are getting on. These must be ready now. So these and OBs will take these off. You can close this back up. Oh, I've got a few bees here. Close it up again. Yep, close it up now. Taking a fume board off this one. There's only a few bees in this seam. Sometimes it's a bit reluctant. You have to accept the fact with a fume board, you don't get every single bee out of the hive. So you've sometimes taken a few bees back and uh, you just have to brush them off. Now another thing you should bear in mind when you're using uh, fume boards is that the bees don't like the fumes. So here's an example of what sometimes a colony will do when, they, when the fume board is used. We're getting bees driven out, out of the colony altogether. So let's put this to an end earlier rather than later. So these bees will recover from this, uh, these fumes pretty shortly. They'll have got most of the fumes out and they will get back to work as normal very soon. But you can see this fume board's been on for only a few minutes longer. And we're not getting the same reaction at all. Okay, let's take that. Yeah. It's not too bad. 
this colony doesn't have the population that that one did, we'll not even bother putting another super on this one. So we're taking a bit of honey home with us now. We've got the colony set up to take off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight supers, of which five are deeps and three are mediums. They'll come off next visit in a couple of days and we'll do a few more with the fume board then as well. Starting the process of removing honey. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.